Hello and welcome to the Alternate Educator Style It With Stencils blog hop. Today I'll be sharing with you the three cards which I made for the blog hop and recreating them in real time on camera. The first card we're going to create is this one here using Alternate's Linear Stencil. This stencil is very delicate and has very thin pieces so we need to stick this to our card so that it doesn't move once we're ink blending. To do this I'm going to use some repositionable sticky tape. I'm going to make sure to put lots and lots onto the stencil and I'll also add some, double, um, some repositionable sellotape. So first off we will stick this down and then from the back I like to add sticky tape just take off a little bit of the tackiness on your skin we'll do that on the two outer edges there we go and I'm going to be ink blending with three different colours we're going to use rubellite aquilicious and midnight violet Okay, so we're going to start off in the centre of the card with some of the rubellite. I like to use blending brushes, inexpensive makeup ones work really well. I'm just going to put some of this in the centre of the card, gradually build up till you get the intensity that you like. That looks quite good there. I think I'm going to move to a little bit of the aqualicious. Building round the outside. You could use small ink daubers to do this, but I really like using these brushes. And I think we'll go in with some of the midnight violet. Gradually building up the intensity of ink. Obviously when the um, pink and blue colours mix they give you a purple shade as well so that's quite handy. Okay, I think I will go back to my pink again. Just coming round the outside. These brushes really are inexpensive, they only cost me a pound in a really cheap high street shop. You can obviously buy more expensive brushes but for me I'd rather have one brush for every colour so buying the cheaper ones works out more economical. Okay, so that's a nice pink. This really does remind me of tie dye, I love the effect you get here. So just building that colour and I think we'll go back to some blue. It's like a tealy blue, this one. It's really, really nice. Okay. I want the edges to be quite thick with ink, really dark. I'm just going to keep going around here. I like the effect that these brushes give you, you sort of get a really smooth blend. I used to use the round foam tools but found that you got lots of sort of streaks and lines from those. I think we'll just bring that blue in just a little bit more to get that purple tone where the pink and the blue meet really really nice okay almost there i'm blending onto one of Altenew's silicon mats which actually allows the ink to move very freely so let's move those ones out of the way i'm going to peel this stencil back hopefully 
and see how good that turned out. I'm just going to pop that off to the side and clean this ink up a little bit because we're going to do the topper parts of this card and I don't want to get blue ink on them, I want to try and keep them as white as possible. I'm just using a baby wipe or you could use a wet cloth, a stamp chamois, something like that. Then I've got a bit of a kitchen towel. Let's give that a little bit of a dry. Obviously, I've already got blue fingers. <laughs> it's the joys of being a crafter. Okay, so on this card, we're going to make a sentiment with the Mega A and also some little die cut alphabets there. So for the A, I'm actually going to use some foam pads on the back of it to. No, I won't use foam pads, I'll use foam tape. That'll be a little bit easier, I think. I have got a pair of scissors somewhere. How many of you have so many pairs of scissors but can never find the ones that you want when you're looking for them? <laughs> Trim that back there. A little bit more because we want that to poke out, and then I think just a little bit in the centre because I don't like it when they wobble too much. That one there, another trick. Let's see if I can get this backing off or not. There, we did it. I should have grabbed a pokey tool, but you know live on camera and things like that you don't think of everything so i want to create a drop shadow so what i'm going to do is i'm going to have the black a underneath and then my white a slightly shifted up and to the right just like that okay now the next thing i need to do is remove this sticky tape so i'm going to turn this over and gently peel the tape back on itself so that it doesn't tear the card. There we go. So to stick the large A onto the card base itself, I'm going to use some glossy accents. And I just have it in this needle tip bottle. Just a little bit, not too much, because if it squirts out, it will actually dilute the ink colour underneath. So we're going to have this A quite high but off to one side, just there, like that. Okay, and like I said previously, we're making this card. So my A is here and my amazing, make amazing, is going to be underneath. So I've got all these little letters die cut already and drop shadowed. But to stick them down, I'm actually going to use some repositionable tape because I think less liquid adhesive might help. So the M will just pop in there. And I need to make sure I spell it right. <laughs> M A Z. Finger. N and then the G. So to actually finish the card off we're going to add some Nuvo drops. You could use enamel dots like I did in my sample card but I have actually run out of all black enamel dots so we'll come on in with the black Nuvos. This is the crystal drops, um, gloss ones, ebony black. I always like to, before I squeeze it onto my project, to just take it off to the side and try it first because just like that, if it has an air clot, it spits out. There we go. That's going to work nicely. So let's add some dots here and there. One there. 
there another I've tried to work in a triangle when I'm putting dots and sequins because I think it actually is more pleasing on the eye but I'm gonna go rogue and put a little one down here because he feels a bit left out in that space okay so that's the black dots and now one thing I like to do to try to get the dots to settle is just tap underneath sometimes I might put something down and just it seems to help them settle and flatten out so there we have it that's the first card that I made the Altenew Educator Hop our second card uses Altenew's on the plus side stencil this is a really cool stencil that has lots of these huge plus signs laid out across the surface. We're also going to be using Altenew's Courageous You stamp set. The sentiment comes from Bold Greetings die set. So let's get started. We're going to start off by putting some sticky tape on our card to secure it to the stencil. I like to add sticky tape from the back as I mentioned in the previous card. So just pop some on both edges. Again taking off the tackiness from the back of my hand and we will lay that down there. Okay so for this card again I'm going to use these three colours the Aqualicious, Midnight Violet and Rubellite. Those down so you can see them a bit better. Okay, we're going to go back in again with the blending brushes. I'm going to kind of go in a bit of a diagonal pattern with the ink in this time. Try to get a bit more of a solid saturation. You shouldn't go round in circles, which helps get into all the nooks and crannies of the stencil. Or you can go side to side, up and down, it really doesn't matter. It's whatever works best for you. Then going to take some of the pink, which is the rubellite, and bring that in right next to the blue. Slightly overlapping. That gives us that secondary colour where they join. And I think we like to have a bit of a true purple so we're coming with this midnight violet it's a really nice deep purpley color you can go in random areas if you like I just kind of like stripes at the moment if you notice my cards from the last Altenew blog hop you'll have seen that a few of those had stripy backgrounds I think stripes with any sort of floral is actually quite a nice juxtaposition. Okay, so I think I like how those meet up. So back to blue, I think. Odd blue up here. I think at the moment pinks, tearly turquoise colours and purples are my all-time favourites seem to be reaching for them more and more. I don't know if it's because the weather seems to be changing and I'm still trying to hold on to a bit of summer. <laughs> so, do you have favourite colour palettes to work with? If so, drop me a comment below. I'd really like to know and maybe I can try something new on my next cards. Okay, a little bit more purple I think just for the very end up here hopefully that's all of the ink in just check back and see if anything needs any more but no i'm happy with that i'm just going to pop the lids on the inks before i knock them over or mix them up and let's reveal our inked background just how I imagined it. I'm going to turn it over and move the sticky tape. Again, peeling it back on itself so that it doesn't tear your cardstock. 
just like that piece there. <laughs> there we go. Get the sticky tape out of the way. Now to add a little bit more interest, I'm actually going to add some splatters. You could use water, but I'm going to actually use Altenew's Pure White Ink Spray. But I'm not going to spritz it, I'm going to take the tube section and just flick. some that are a bit bigger and they will actually pick up some of the ink that we've blended as it dries and it won't be pure white it will be like a lighter shade of ink which I'm fine with okay so we need that one to dry I'm just gonna wipe my inky fingers perhaps move this one to the side to dry a little clean up we're going to need to stamp the floral element, which is coming from that Courageous You stamp set. Now, don't worry about your stamping mats becoming stained because you can get that off. It just needs a, a good scrub. They're fine to go in hot water. Sometimes I use hand sanitizer to clean them. Okay, so to stamp this next section, I'm going to bring you my stamping tool. Just make sure all that's in frame. Move some bits and pieces. I'm working at a small, smaller desk to video, and I'm used to having like tons of room. But not today. So the stamp that we're using is a really large stamp, and it does fit in here. Just pop that in so you know how big this stamp is. It does fit, it's absolutely huge. I'm just gonna actually pick that up first. Now obviously my magnets aren't gonna work in here because the stamp's too big, so I'll put some dotty tape on the back, take a little bit of the tack off it and place it down just there. Now is that lined up exactly how I would like it? Yeah, I think that looks good. So I'm going to use Ultimus Obsidian Black Ink. It's a really good crisp ink that gives perfect coverage. So ink this up here. I like to turn the ink pad as I'm inking. I just think that you get more even coverage. I don't know if that's a true fact or it just works for me, but we're going to go with it. <laughs> I'll turn that over, give this a good press down. We're actually going to keep the floral element in black and white because I think that allows the background to speak more. I think that looks good. So I'll pop that ink away, grab that panel, close up my stamp tool, which I will clean later. And we're going to fussy cut around this image. Um, I don't actually have the die for this one, but as I use it so often, I think it might be worth getting. So I'm just nothing fancy, just leaving a little white border, turning my scissors as I go. Hopefully, you can see okay there. I'm trying a different setup for filming this and it's all new to me <laughs> to say the least. Let's just come down here like this. So yeah, if you've looked at my YouTube before, you'll notice that I'm by no means a professional video editor, maker, recorder, however you'd like to say it. Um, I'm trying <laughs> and that's what counts, right? So let's just finish this last piece there. Okay, so now we have this section. We have to work out where we want it to sit on our background. So let's bring that background back in. 
I think that actually will look really cool just there. So what we'll do is we'll add foam tape to the back of this piece, if I can remember where I put it. There we go. So we'll have some there, some there. So I like to make sure that there's enough that the piece is actually going to sit sturdy on the card and not wobble too much. Um, just a tiny bit there. Okay. So then that was my cellar tape. Let's just pull these pieces off. Lovely. Let's bring this one back into shot. I'm going to try not to get my head in the view now because I need to really. Do I want it that way? No, it needs to go this way. Okay, so let's just line that bottom corner up there, that edge, and that edge. Ha <laughs> ha. Lovely. Okay, so the next thing we need is a sentiment. So I've used the bold greetings die to cut the hello three times because we're going to chipboard them up so generally i like to use like some glossy accents on the back just to a little bit because it still gives me some wiggle room i shouldn't have left the lid off this let's just try to get it flowing <laughs> so just a little hey maybe that was a bit too much on the back sandwich them together Just making sure that they are lined up 100% don't want to collect with too much adhesive but we'll have that as our underneath centre and on top we'll make sure we don't put as much glue dots along the way okay hopefully you can still see this one there, just like that and then it, I pick them up and because it's a wet adhesive you can kind of move them around in your hands squeeze them together make sure that they are all nicely lined up. Okay, so a little bit of adhesive again on the back. So that's just three layers together. Sometimes I'll go as crazy as putting five together. It depends how much dimension I'd like. I think we're going to go just here with that one. Press it down so that it sticks. It's not lighting up just yet. Give it another sec. Pop a little bit of glue. There we go, that one's better. And then we'll add some Nuvo drops to embellish. And this time I have Caribbean Ocean, Crushed Grape, and Ebony Black. So just like before, I'm going to make sure that they're flowing nicely and aren't going to spit onto my project. This one's quite thick, which means that it's not as warm as I'd like it to be, but that's not a problem. Put one of those there. Put a nice big purple one there. Smaller here. Blue. Oh, that's a lovely colour. These colours really work well with the ink colours in the background. It sort of draws everything together nicely. And I think maybe just a couple of black dots. Have one there. And one there. 
that will work nicely and there we have it my sample card and my on-camera card my third and final card uses Altenew's confetti stencil so this is the card we're going to be making so Altenew's confetti stencil is made up of stars, hearts and lots of little dots um, in the card I've inked again with the three ink colours that we've used for the other two cards and the sentiment XOXO or XOOX comes from the bold alphabet die. Okay so let's get started. So we're going to again attach our card panel and stencil using some sticky tape to get that lined up and this time we're going to go in quite a random inking pattern we're not going to keep the colours next to each other necessarily or going straight lines we're just going to have a little bit of fun okay so I'm starting with the aqualicious Again, I want this one to be quite saturated. I like to work in threes, um, also in triangle formations because I think it's a lot more pleasing on the eye. Obviously, in gardening, we're used to planting in threes or in odd numbers, and it, it just seems to work. I'm not sure. Of the science behind it if there is any or if it just is one of those random things okay so we've got some of the aqualicious there let's have some rubellite i'm trying to make sure to get the very edges of the card because i'm not having any white edge or i'm not going to Sort of trim this down and put it onto a card it's going to be a full panelled card that we're making a little bit over here and finally we'll add in the midnight violet so let me know what you think of this colour combination. Does it work for you? Is it too bright? I kind of feel like it would be really good for teenagers because they can seem tricky at times to know what to use colour or image wise. So I think something like this that's quite a, a fun graphic look with bold pattern and colours works quite nicely. I think that might do us okay so that is the inking of the background panel let's just remove our stencil there we go again remove this tape very carefully put that off to the side We're going to need to ink a second piece of cardstock for me to be able to cut the alphabet dies from. So I'm just going to clean that a little. And dry it off slightly. And we've got a second piece of card here. So in my original card, I've used the Midnight Violet and the Aqualicious. So I'm going to colour both ends of my cardstock. some of this over here as you can see I'm using the mini ink cubes that's the only inks I've ever had from Altenew and I've been using Altenew products now for 
three years and if you know me I stamp lots I create lots of cards when there's release hops that I'm involved in I tend to do roughly 10 cards and then there's all cards that I make for my own personal use in between and these ink cubes have never been re-inked I've never bought a second set of any colour they're still going strong now I get asked lots actually uh, are they worth it should I just get the big oval pads but I think it's what your budget will allow if you want more colours then obviously the mini cubes are a more cost effective solution option yeah we've got enough of that colour on there if you can afford it every so often Altenew has the ovals on really great offers like lots of sort of reduction in price so if you can grab them when they're on offer then yeah I'd say get them why not at the end of the day we're, we're all crafters and some of us suffer with full set syndrome and even though we have things in the minis we want them in the large it's you do you whatever floats your boat so just getting some of this purple on here I'm actually going to cut these using Altenew's Mini Blossom die cutting machine so that'll be quite nice to show that on camera. I think we've got enough coverage there. Right, before I cut I'm going to clean this mess because otherwise I will smear it everywhere. Um, I am a bit of a messy crafter in terms of ink. Everything else I'm quite OCD about and like to be really clean and tidy and after each crafting session I make sure to tidy my room up so that it's perfectly clean and organised ready for the next time. How about you? Do you do that or do you just craft on the hop and do it as and when you can and not tidy up? Okay so we need the X and O. Let's find those. X and O. I'm going to trim this card put down so it fits in my machine. We'll cut the blue first and then we'll cut the purple after. So let's just pop these on here. Now I always cut down into the thickest plate because that helps minimise any warping. Let's pop that over there and that one over there and that one onto there and let's bring in this mini blossom. Now I don't know if it's going to suction onto this mat because I've got my silicon mat but I'll, I'll hold it in place. Around, around, pop those Oh, it has suctioned, fantastic. So, put those. We've got an X and an O. There are little release holes on the back of the dies to help you pop out your cut pieces, but if you've got sticky tape on the back, that can stop them from coming out. <laughs> so, let's move that sticky tape there. Let's cut the purple. X there. And an O there. Again, making sure that we're cutting down into the thicker plate. Just run those through. Okay, I'm just going to move the mini blossom. This is Mini Blossom, I'm not sure if you've seen it yet. Really, really cute little machine. And it actually sits on my desk all the time. Okay. So, now we have got X's and O's in both the blue colour and the purple. What I did before I came on camera was to also cut some in white 
because we're going to actually do a faux chipboard effect. So I'm going to use this dotty tape runner because the dots only stick to where the cardstock is. So we're not not really doing a drop shadow on this. We're just going straight straight on. Now the X does have a right way and a wrong way. So we need to find the correct positioning. That one there. Do the O's. We could do multiple layers to make it an even thicker chipboard type piece. Or you could drop shadow, you could cut in multiple colours and drop shadow, sort of have a staggered, almost rainbow effect. That would look pretty cool. Okay, so in my original card, we've got some black twine, so let's do that next, shall we? Let's get the twine. I like to sort of hold it with my thumb wrap it around my fingers a couple of times and then kind of do a figure of eight and trim that is normally plenty and it just all came undone <laughs> okay so what we'll do is we'll just lay it down twist it round a little find a layout that looks good for us i think that Will work. We're actually going to put some foam squares onto the back of our X's and O's and trap the tape underneath. So I'll just put some foam on these. Foam works, you could also use something like a cellophane glue and then that would grab your string or twine. Um, I find four of these mini pads. They're, these are like five mil square and I think they're maybe three mil thickness. Um, these ones seem to work quite nicely. So let's remember we used the green one up at the top. So I'm going to hold this down and I'm going to bring this foam pad down. I can feel that it's actually got hold of the twine underneath. So next do a blue X if you want a purple O. These like X's and O's for like hugs and kisses. I know normally you'd have like XOXO, but I like the different colours underneath each other. Now this end of twine here, I'm going to try to capture it just there. I don't like the loose ends showing. So we've got XO. Oh. We are going to go XOXO on this one because I coloured them the wrong way. <laughs> it was bound to happen, but you know, there are no mistakes in crafting. Is it, they say happy accidents. We'll see. So this X down here and then the O. So I just told you how I was going to do XOOX, coloured it all wrong. We're going with it because we're not going to waste it. It's going to look good anyway. Okay, so the X's and O's are on. The next thing to do is to add some trusty Nuvo drops. I think we'll have a little bit of black. We'll just, again, allow the air to come out of them. We'll have a black one up here. Um, a bit down here. Again, working in that 
sort of magic triangular formation. Three black ones. Uh, let's get some of the blue. So blue where we have pink. Oh, I've actually used it. There we go. Get the excess air out. A nice big blue one. Ooh. It's got a bit of a tail to it. We have blue over here. And some purple. I don't actually have any bright pink ones at the moment, but I think the purple should work quite nicely. And that is a good juicy one there. Uh, and do that one down here. Okay, so. Let's compare, shall we? The one made on camera with the one made as a sample for the hot. Thank you for taking the time to stop by today. I really do appreciate it. Please leave me comments down below. I'd love to know what you think of the video. Take care. Bye.